Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today we're back in the deep sea cabinet 20,000 bricks under the sea with a deep sea operation base for level number three. So as you know I want a uh, human presence with loads of divers and submarines on pretty much every level of my cabinet. Uh, the surface level is full of ships already. We've got a really big base on level one as I see it on the sort of three ever descending levels of the cabinet. Uh, the second level down is going to have the great big uh, Silent Mary wreck on it and another base which will be this one uh, and then at the bottom of course we've got the Atlantis pyramid and all the mysterious stuff so yeah we're talking about this level here which is currently unstarted uh, and this is where I'm going to start with the wonderful 60096 deep sea operation base from 2015 which is an absolutely fabulous set that I got, well, probably way back in 2015. <laughs> uh, it did come with a supply seaplane, which was the uh, sort of craft numbered E9, uh, which I sold on immediately, never having built it, because I would already knew it was going to be too big for my uh, short-term plans, as it was then uh, for a small cabinet. But uh, that's grown, as we know now. And we've got a great big cabinet with loads of stuff in, but I'm, I was right to sell it, because it's far too big for uh, even my massive cabinet now. Uh, it also came with this beautiful little submarine, which is E number eight, which I've already put onto the surface uh, of my cabinet, which is what I think is really interesting, actually, because it's got the sort of supplies and it's clearly like a sort of little ferry that basically is driven by one of these divers on the handlebars on the back to bring down supplies like tanks that go on the front of here for the oxygen supply uh, just to and from uh, the supply vessels. So I think that's a really good touch, which is why I included it already uh, with a diver waving at the helicopter. So that's great. Uh, and then it also comes with E number seven, which is this submersible, which is a bit plain, a bit ordinary, normal sort of setup, propellers on the back, couple of tanks, some stickers and some robot arms. So I may keep that, I may not, I may augment that, but that's not what I'm gonna focus on today. Uh, we've got a little side build, <laughs> which is a bit odd, and it almost looks like a sort of prison cell with some treasure in it. But uh, you know, the treasure chest is worth having because we've got a gold bar uh, and some gems. <laughs> as normal. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to incorporate that necessarily, but it's quite a fun little side build. There's some useful pieces on it at the very least. Ah, but the main thing, of course, is this wonderful huge base, and that's the reason why I got it. Uh, so basically this is in two uh, main segments. We've got the uh, command base itself, or operation base, with its uh, movable door. Uh, and Robin's in there at the moment. These tanks on the front, loads of little lights all over the place, two of these nice big domes, and it's open-backed as we currently uh, stand with some supplies on the wall with that sort of torch uh, and so on, uh, these computer panels, and, well, a couple of control sort of desks, I suppose, for observation. So not much on the inside, to be honest, uh, but the really interesting part is this second section, which you can kind of do back-to-back -back if you want, one configuration, or side to side as I had it at the beginning, uh, where we've got this movable gantry on the top, which supports anything, which could be this submarine, or it could be my diving bell that we did uh, the other week. Uh, and that can basically bring it back to here and put it down on the touchpad or for repairs or restocking or whatever, then lift it up, move it over a great big abyss, which will be going down obviously into our fourth layer in the cabinet to the Atlantis level, and then lower it down very controlled because it doesn't want to drive down because it's going to be a very sort of a deep uh, and vertical chasm. That's how I see it anyway. So yeah, I think this is a really great set. And it was part of the uh, sort of origin, I suppose, of the idea of doing a multi-level cabinet. I'd already had the idea of doing the surface level on one glass shelf and then, you know, the undersea level uh, underneath it. But then with sets like this, I sort of thought, well, you could go even lower than that. So we owe this set a great deal of thanks for that. So, uh, yeah, so this will be the deepest base in uh, the cabinet, I think. I don't think we'll have a base itself on the bottom, bottom level, because it's far too secret as it stands. Uh, so I'm thinking we'll call this Deep Base, or maybe we'll call it Deep Base Nine, <laughs> on a sort of pun on Deep Space Nine, of course. Uh, maybe there's one of these bases on, well, nine different entrances to the abyss, 
Or maybe something awful happened and we really don't ask what happened to Deep Base 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Who knows? You'll have to come up with the backstory, help me with that, in a comment section. But uh, I kind of prefer that idea that eight of them went wrong <laughs> because Lego, you know, is kind of uh, funny like that. You can have some funny backstories. And I figure, you know, the seals were very uh, faulty with one uh, and it went very badly <laughs> for the inhabitants. Uh, number two, uh, the oxygen ran out and so on. You can make up a list of eight disasters. But uh, yeah, as I see it, this is going to be much less about living space uh, and much more about work space for uh, descending into that lowest level of all. So uh, I'm not just going to plonk this set in by any means, because although it's really nice, it's got uh, lots of problems in my mind. Uh, it's quite big as it stands, but my cabinet's even bigger, so I want to make it much bigger, both this sort of wider, maybe deeper as well. This bit much bigger uh, in both directions, basically, well, and down as well, because I want to continue these stanchions, not only down uh, below this sort of level, uh, on level three, uh, 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 but have them descending all the way down to level four. So this whole structure will bridge uh, two uh, levels with the glass in between, of course. So yeah, we won't do all of that today, but uh, nonetheless. So um, I do want to keep the idea of having this in two halves with the operations room on the one side and the sort of descent crane repair bay sort of setup on the other side. And I do kind of like a lot of the features. I like these great big yellow stanchions. I like uh, these in the front of here and the detail with the lights. And I like the tanks on the front and these domes and so on. So there's quite a lot that I'm going to keep. It's definitely going to be an amendment to this set rather than a complete redo. Although, having said that, I think I'm going to take it completely apart and kind of start again. Um, I'm going to have it in a different configuration from the two that are available at the moment. This side by side, I'm not a big fan of. And this, well, behind that doesn't make any sense at all. As I see it, we need to take this whole thing off and have it put right in front of here. So the control bay over here is looking directly at it. So basically Robin would be kind of here effectively. And that will be the bit that's leaning over the abyss, of course. So that is another really big change. Uh, now I'm thinking, because it's open-backed, that I'll have to descend it back a little bit more so it's level at the back, definitely. But I think I'll keep it open-backed and just have it built against the rock face. Because at the moment, obviously, the water can get in very easily. <laughs> but uh, if I have a rock face there and make this sort of reach the back and this reach the back and so on, then it should be all right. So I won't do the rock face either today, but I think that will be a really good plan. Uh, and then another thing I want to do is put an airlock in. Because, although we'll probably never see it again once it's built up against the rock, this door just opens uh, and then the water comes in and then everybody dies. <laughs> or they have to work in their uh, diving equipment, which doesn't make much sense. So maybe that's what happened with Deep Base 3. They didn't really work that out. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I want to rectify that by having a two sort of uh, door airlock system. So you come into there with the water, drain the water, then open the second door and get in. So people can work in here without breathing apparatus on. So that is a big thing. And then hopefully we'll be able to see all that detail through the side glass of the cabinet where we'll be able to look through this side window as well. Otherwise, uh, it'll be a complete waste of effort, but I'll know it's there and that's quite important to me. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely do that. So yeah, what are we doing? Bigger base bit, bigger uh, crane bit, uh, airlock in the middle. Uh, and what I also want to include uh, some really interesting bricks as well, as I always like to do. I really want to incorporate is this, or rather, duh, 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 these. Uh, now, the Duplo pieces, as you can immediately see, but I just think they look absolutely great. I kind of bought them without an idea of where they'd go uh, ages ago, and, and I figured because of the yellow color that they'd work really well in here. Uh, so, this is part number 4537, and it's called Duplo Support 2x4x3, by by uh, which means it's actually 4x8 by six uh, in normal Lego, uh, it being sort of uh, double the dimensions and so on. Uh, and this came in a few sets, including 2700 Duplo train set from 1983, uh, where it makes up part of the crane, of course. Uh, and I figured that these, because I just love this sort of side view, it looks very industrial at all, could basically be the supports for the main thing. 
basically like that, very crudely. Uh, now, they are going to have to be connected via some sort of normal 2x2 uh, two two bricks or something like that, because not every uh, system Lego brick connects very well with a Duplo one, but that, I think, will be really sort of industrial and... Uh, uh, very, oh yeah, I'm liking the look of that already. Very um, um, strong, essentially, because I think they build these whole things uh, on the surface and then basically just, just dump them off the side of a boat and they kind of go down and settle down. So that uh, is very appropriate for that, if you've ever seen the film Abyss. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I've witted far too long already. I'm going to get on with doing this, basically break it all down, uh, and then we can start building it up from these pieces. Okay, so Duplo piece, can put anything sort of two by two on, so to speak, over any of these big studs. And I'm even gonna use a round one on there, for example. It all works. And I'm gonna change the uh, kind of stanchions right in front of the base to black, just to contrast to all the yellow ones that we're gonna have going down between the levels, just to get that variety up. And then I can attach that onto the ground of my base and just add a little bit more plate to give us a ground level and there we go that is our base with its lovely big stanchion legs i like it a lot raised above what will be the coral level of course so this gap in here and all around will be absolutely caked in plant life uh, and animals and color and all the rest of it so it'll look really great uh, now these round 2x2 two two bricks are basically going to be the bottom of these tanks that were on the original set. They had a black plate on the bottom, so I'm just going to make them slightly longer uh, and have a black round brick. So they fit on that Duplo piece, and there we go. That is looking really nice already. I like it a lot. Right, I'll keep going. We're going to have an airlock, well, very narrow one, but about here. Okay, so I've got the profile of the inside kind of sorted. I hadn't noticed before, but there's a mermaid sticker kind of on there. It's like they've identified a mermaid, so I'll have to add one of those to the outside scene, as well as a picture of the surface vessel. So there are all the computer panels for the middle. Uh, a little one there. Steps up to this window, I thought, instead of what was there before. And here is the uh, airlock, of course. So I've made two doors, slightly improved look to them and one will clip on there and be the outside door and the other one will clip on there and be the inside door uh, and that just gets past the chair there so that's all right uh, and i thought about all these areas and these steps here and i thought they might get quite slippy so what do you need when you've got a slippy floor well tread plates of course oh it seems so obvious so i thought i would use my favorite stickered pieces to uh, decorate the inside of this in a way that will probably never be seen again. And we'll have some there and some there just to line the airlock doors with. And I think that looks really nice. And then why not do the same thing up these steps to the top where I can have somebody peering out of the window. Now, what I did here was a little bit of sticker surgery uh, because instead of using a 1x4, I've got a 1x2 piece and a jumper plate so I can have somebody standing on it attached. I did quite a poor job uh, of the side there, cutting out a hole for the stud. I did a great job on the other side. That's absolutely great. But it doesn't really matter because we're going to have a great big minifigure stuck on the top of that so we won't really see the difference. So if I just put a couple more plates in here... Uh, and that one there, then I can put in the top step right on the edge of that dome. Uh, and then I thought I would have, as well as the original inhabitant of this uh, in her nice get up there with the logo on the back and her walkie talkie in her pocket, which I think looks best standing up, leaning over the control panel, and looking out the window, I would have a child dressed up in the same torso, but with little legs, of course, uh, grinning from ear to ear. Because I reckon, you know, he spends so much time away from his mother if he didn't come along that he's on for the ride. So it's a bit sort of Star trek -y really, isn't it? <laughs> Where you have the children of the uh, people working in the station uh, coming along as well. But I thought it'd be quite a good uh, thing to do. And also, he's just the right height <laughs> to fit in this area here. So when we've got the whole thing finished, he'll be smiling and completely uh, in the center of that dome. And I think that's the best reason for including him there. And you can't see my little mess up on the stickers there. 
because his feet are covering that join. So that's great. It looks like an unbroken set of slip proof stairs. So very nice indeed. So I'll continue building this up uh, with more walls and I'm going to try and add more stickers and logos and stuff like that. I've got these interesting repair bay ones. I've got Aqua Raiders ones. I've got my second favourite tile, these stripy ones to use all over the place. Uh, and I've even got some more, if I can find them, of a different type. No, can't find them. Yeah, there we go. Well, we've got some different stripes and this kind of uh, pipe. I really like these. So I think I'll definitely make sure these get included somewhere. Okay, so we're almost done with the interior now. Uh, got more screens from the original set with a rack on and a shark, it looks like. Walkie-talkie, fire extinguisher, very important. And there's the inside door of the airlock. Very nice indeed. All fully functioning. I imagine this thing continues on into the rock. So, uh, yeah, plenty of space for that to swing open. And there's the rather dark and gloomy <laughs> middle section, but that's fine. Well, we can only really see that if you open the outside door, which has got this nice sort of flashing warning light above it when it's in use. Uh, ladders to help you get in. And that looks really nice as well. So there we go. So that is that section all done. Uh, I might put more people on the inside so you can see them at angles. But to be honest, when it's in the cabinet, you really won't notice. You won't notice most of what I've done. Uh, but we've also got that chap there, of course. And then onto the front where I've added as many interesting bricks and lights and sort of features as I can, including a little fish up here. I'll do some more when I've done the roof, I think. But that shows up nicely against the yellow. Uh, and then I've got that selection of tiles. So I'm definitely going to include these. Uh, should they be pointing in? Mm, I don't think so. I think they should be pointing out. So I'm going to put those two mm, 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 there. We can have the lights sort of shining on the area. Uh, and should the area be called the repair bay? I quite like those because I've got nowhere really else to use those. Or the aqua raiders symbol. So I could put them. I'm just going to put these on lightly. Like that and that. I mean, that does look good, of course, but yeah, like I say, oh, I do really like that actually. I'm not too sure, but it's a bit of a clash with that logo that's incredibly nearby, though we could get rid of that. I'm just thinking I've got nowhere else to put these repair bay ones. So I'm going to try it with that on first. And you tell me what you think of that. Because remember, when we've got all of that bay here and the sort of flat bit for it to work on, I think that'll make more sense. So yeah, really nice sticker there. Very good. Right, so now I'm going to put on the roof. Uh, put most of this sort of piping back and maybe add a bit more and that should pin all that in. Uh, then I'm thinking of adding uh, some great big lights, some sort of floodlights on the top because you need a lot of light when it's very deep down. Uh, and I might just put loads of lamps on that sort of pointing down, uh, mounted on the roof. Uh, and then we can start attaching the, well, <laughs> remnants of this. Uh, I've been cannibalizing the pieces as I've been going. Uh, and I'm going to bring that out with a little sort of setup here that's going to clip into this Technic. Uh, brick on the underside here uh, to give it a bit of strength for the first bit of what will be uh, the replacement for that brick there. So that's going to go about there and I just put a jumper plate on so I can have a crab joining in the fun just like we did on the base uh, on the level above as well. So I'll start bringing that out and then we can uh, do the second section over here. Hmm, I hope we have time to finish it. All right, how about that? Those Duplo structure pieces. And then all this detail caked all over every flat surface on the top section, looking really nice. Loads of detail, pipes, lights, grill pieces, and the rest of it all over. Uh, I've added the supervisor <laughs> looking over the shoulder of our operative inside. Hopefully she doesn't muck up and send something all the way to the bottom of the depths where it shouldn't have been. <laughs> but yeah, that's looking really nice. Now I said I was going to add some light stanchions on the top. So that's what these ones are. And I'll just pop them, I don't know, about there. And they'll flood the whole area with loads and loads of light. I'll get it symmetrical. There we go. Uh, so divers can find a way in and I don't know, we can see what we're loading and all the rest of it, all repairing on our repair bay. Yes. Uh, and that's the next bit we need to do. So I've started building that with this sort of setup. Uh, I've cannibalized all these lights off the front. Well, there was only one before actually, and I've got three on now peering down, down, down into the depths. Uh, and this is quite a bit deeper than it was before. I've kept the same width actually, uh, after all that, because 
I appreciate we've got a really, really big wreck in the sunken uh, Silent Mary, rather, to accommodate on this level. So I'm not going as broad as I could, uh, but I am going a lot deeper. So we've got a much bigger repair bay uh, on the front, which was quite boring before. But now I've gone <laughs> a bit stripy tiled crazy with this slightly bigger version. And that's going to, if I just remove the crab here, and clip this on under here. It's going to join all this together, which is a bit fragile at the moment. So I'll just put on some temporary props at the front like that. Then try and push this down without destroying absolutely everything else. Yes, yeah, so far so good. I'll give that a good push down off camera. I can put those in to secure it. One, two, three, four. And then, yeah, got a really nice sized repair bay that we can have that submarine on or some of the big containers that will probably be full of stuff going down to the lowest level so our divers can reach Atlantis. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. Maybe a bit too stripy. <laughs> You'll have to let me know what you think of that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it is rather stripy, isn't it? But that looks nice. I think there's a lot more room. You saw before that very small submarine was kind of bashing against all four of the pillars at once. I think we've got a lot more space now here and a really good space for lowering down. And that is the bit that's going to go through the glass. So the glass will be where my desk is now. Or actually, no, I think a whole bit lower, actually. I think I'm going to have uh, two more of these tall stanchions. So it'll be sort of on a bank sort of up here uh, with those stanchions going all the way down to the glass and then some more ones picking up with that left off on the floor below so that is the current plan yes very nice so right well i need to break this apart it seems even more so we can get the other sides on and get this thing enclosed and then get the uh, gantry bit back in place cool looking really good though all right and here is the complete deep base nine Looking very nice indeed with this huge descent kind of crane and repair bay set up on the front. Much better location for it. I mean, it does obscure the base a little bit, uh, but it just makes you want to sort of peer down and look into all these different angles and around these stanchions and cross beams and all the rest of it to see what's going on. And it is busy as anything. I love it. Looks absolutely great. Very industrial, and very heavy duty, I think. Very nice indeed. Right, well, uh, I want to add these pieces onto it, not because they uh, do any express function, other than they're just incredibly interestingly shaped. And I thought I could just bridge that kind of gap between those two Technic pieces with one on each side. So we'll see how that looks. Yeah, that makes it look even more industrial. So that's good fun. I also thought I'd add a lot more kind of wildlife. We've got a couple of fish on here, but if I add a normal ladder on there going down uh, then I can add another ladder on the other side but this time absolutely caked with fish uh, and I've used uh, black uh, skeleton arms or robot arms to sort of hold them all on and it's hard to kind of see the uh, connecting bits because of that black ladder behind it I think and that looks like an interesting shoal of fish that just happens to be uh, around the steps at the moment we're looking at it so I can put that there and have it there and I think that looks absolutely great. Yeah, what do you think of that? Very nice little sort of sub scene. Hard to focus on. There we go. Very nice. Uh, and this pole will continue on down using the normal stanchions. It's not going to be solid like that. Uh, so the glass will be basically a little bit lower than we're currently seeing on the desk level. Uh, so the glass will be under this piece, which will be in here. Uh, and then we'll have a load more, just one, two, three, four, five, six sort of thing on each side, going all the way down to the very bottom of the Atlantis level. That is the current plan. So I'm going to add another shoal of fish up here. And you see, I've already added some clips and so on, just uh, wherever I can in the structure so I can have a different contrast color of wildlife. Because remember, we're going to have all the coral underneath all of this. So it makes sense that there'd be lots of fish milling around in between meals or in between being a meal <laughs> if a shark comes along. Uh, I'm just going to mount one on a Technic a beam itself using one of these uh, half pins with friction ridges. Hopefully it's frictiony enough for this not to sort of, yep, bend forward under its own weight. So there we go. So there's a nice uh, bright light blue set of fish there. 
and the shark that's looking to eat one of them for his dinner can be on an aerial piece uh, maybe suspended there that's looking pretty good uh, and I just got one of these huge sea turtle pieces so maybe he's this far down I don't know he might be but uh, you know feeding on something that lives in a coral that looks pretty interesting I'll probably move all this wildlife when I get it in but it's good to dress it for today to make it look finished and maybe that's why the boy uh, the window over here is so happy because he's just seen a wonderfully big turtle going on his merry business outside uh, and then we want some human life as well so we could have a diver just connected to one of these poles up here maybe another one's going by on his uh, sea scooter that was sent into the channel on uh, a past brick call so maybe he's just going on by or something like that uh, and I've got a few more bits and pieces here I've got a starfish that I'm just put say there another one in this magenta color I'm just going to put right up here uh, and I've even got a couple of fish on more robot arms to maybe add next to this light up Ooh, here. So we've got something on the highest point. Can you see that? Not really. There we go. Right up there in the top corner. Very nice indeed. So yeah, a very, very packed and stacked scene. And uh, I love it. It just looks so Ugh, chunky and <laughs> really big and powerful. I've done a really good amount of progress today, so it should work really well as well. Uh, I could put the uh, submarine back on, but I'm not keen to use this unaltered. But I figured it would also be lowering down uh, equipment down to the bottom. And I've got three of these sort of openable sort of containers, not with anything in at the moment, but they might be full in universe. Uh, they came from the set 60265, the uh, ocean exploration base uh, from 2020 that I used for uh, the multi sort of uh, bit that's on the base above. Um, but I didn't use these pieces, these kind of storage bay pieces. So I've got three of these because I used three sets to make that great big base. So I've converted them just with some of these Aqua Raider logos. And we've still got some of the Hammerhead stickers on uh, and this sort of lifting piece. So this can just be a generic undersea container. And we can just pop that on the repair bay just to one side, ready to be lowered down. I think that adds a lot of interest as well to the scene so yeah really good very very happy with that but uh as ever do tell me what you think can i improve it still further well it's pretty hard to show you all the detail with all of this stuff in the foreground because the camera won't focus on the thing you want but uh i've moved to shaky hands cam just so you can try and appreciate all of the different perspectives that will be visible in the cabinet because remember, we'll be able to look at this from above through all the glass shelves and from below, of course. And that is what makes a build like this really interesting that you can kind of look through it and round it and all the rest of the angles. I just love this fish ladder type sort of setup. It looks really effective, doesn't it? Just happens to be there. And I like this really big container as well. I figure with all the different logos that are on all of this, with the Acra Raiders and the kind of Hammerhead ones and all of the uh, ones on the top with the octopus on the anchor, like uh, there, uh, maybe this is like the International Space Station and it's such an effort of humanity to get all this and such a huge cost that essentially uh, all of the nations are clubbing together and uh, that's all their different logos uh, being brought into one project so that is kind of a backstory for that that kind of works if you ask me but I'm very happy with the result of this um, I think my favorite part is still the uh, Duplo legs <laughs> which looks so industrial uh, and is a really interesting uh, choice of piece and, and way to use it that's uh, what I'm all about so I'm very happy with that but getting all of this colorful uh, divers and uh, wildlife all around it as well makes it just look fantastic if you ask me so as always thank you very much for watching it is appreciated do remember to like comment and subscribe for more awesome lego videos and if you value this channel there are many ways in which you can support it do click on the links below uh, and next time on robin hood bricks we're gonna have a bit of a change actually because uh I think I'm going to start doing my brick hauls on a different channel, a different channel on YouTube, uh, a sister channel, uh, all under the sort of same umbrella, of course. Uh, and that's just so 
those of you who are interested in the Brit cause can continue to watch them. Uh, and those of you who aren't, uh, don't have to, don't have to see them. Uh, and better still, uh, the algorithm will forgive me for having lower figures on those videos and will hopefully pump my videos even more because we need to get all of these wonderful builds to as many uh, potential viewers as possible. So I'm going to give that a go. Uh, we've got 180 Brit Calls already on this channel, but uh, yeah, I think the 181st on Wednesday will be the first video of a new channel. So go over there and click on that. Hopefully I'll have it set up by the time you are hearing this uh, and you can subscribe to that or just go there on Wednesday and subscribe while you're there because it's very important uh, for that channel's uh, viewability uh, that you uh, subscribe to that too. So anyway, that is enough channel news for now. There'll be much more channel news in the coming weeks and months as we get on with uh, preparation for the space for Brick Nottingham 2.0. Uh, and uh, yeah, until then, see you. Yeah, that looks very big, very yellow and very solid.